The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Addiction. It's a battle that we all struggle with at some point in our lives. When the challenges and questions of addiction are in our path, the answers and solutions are not easy to find. But in Fairfield County, Ohio, there is hope. There is help and there is healing. Steve Rao leads us down the road to recovery. Hello there and welcome to another Road to Recovery show. The show that attempts to offer hope and help and wholeness and healing for those who are struggling with addiction. Or maybe you have a friend or a family member, a co-worker, a neighbor, maybe a classmate to somebody in your life who is struggling. There is hope. You can make it to help and wholeness and healing. And there are lots of people that want to help you to do that. And that's really what this show is all about. We like to bring individuals on who have had success in these areas. And such is the case today. My name is Steve Rao and our guest today is Shanna Littleton. She's the executive director of Grace Haven Ministries right here in Lancaster and Fairfield County. Shanna, welcome to Road to Recovery. Thank you, glad to be here. It's a pleasure to have you joining us. We need to know a little bit of background about Shanna Littleton. Of course, Grace Haven Ministry started by Sheriff Dave Phelan's wife, Loretta. Yes. And I believe you are the second executive director. Is that correct? Correct. How did you get involved in this process? Um, well, we moved to Lancaster in January of 2013 and wanted to find uh, some place to serve uh, locally in our community, um, have a big heart for missions, um, whether that be local or abroad. So I really felt... Uh, a call to be part of, of Grace Haven. Yeah, so. wonderful. Um, Loretta Phelan, um, it was time for her to make uh, a transition in her life. And so why did you say, yes, I'll throw my hat in the ring uh, <laughs> for this Grace Haven Ministries? Um, well, I had mentored um, and kind of being behind the scenes and seeing um, just the opportunity that was provided for women who were um, overcoming addiction. And I wanted to be a part of that because I saw that there was it really was impacting their lives in a way. And um, so when it, when it did come time for a transition to take place and, and thought if this is really what I need to be doing, um, I have no problem stepping up and giving it 100%. So it was, it was definitely um, a challenging aspect to consider, sure. but it's, it's definitely where I know I need to be. Very good. You told me off the air that um, of all the things you've wanted to do in your life, the one thing that you didn't want to do is to work <laughs> with someone who might be struggling with drug addiction, And uh, but yet you said yes. Why yeah. did you overcome that hesitation in your own life? Um, and, and that kind of happened prior to mentoring. Okay. Um, the, the drug addiction world is very dark and very hard to understand, um, and sometimes being involved with that, you know, you do get to see the other side of everything, and some of that is very dark and very broken. Sure. Um, but in the midst of that, you can find opportunity and hope, and that is what, you know, I really kind of thought, you know, I'm kind of gravitating this way, and I'm just, I'm just going to be submissive with that decision and, and roll with it. So. Someone said the light shines brightest in the darkest places, yeah. and so you know there is hope and help and wholeness and healing yeah. that can be found uh, if in this dark place uh, a light is shown and one of the lights is Grace Haven Ministries. What is the actual uh, activities at Grace Haven Ministries? What do you do? Um, we have several different programs that we do in-house. Um, we have a 12-step program. We have a substance abuse class. Um, we do have a casual Bible study uh, that we have once a week. Um, and then just recently, um, our current house supervisor has started doing a relapse prevention program with the residents just to add something else uh, you know, to their recovery process because that's important to have very um, distinct key factors in their recovery. Very good. So, For those who may be unfamiliar with Grace Haven Ministries, how does a person end up in this ministry? Um, you know, we're kind of starting to see many different avenues with, with the community and, and the drug addiction. Um, a lot of our residents will come straight from prison um, if they need a place to stay. Uh, we also have other residents who maybe they've had to do a rehab 
a, a very strict, intense rehab program. Okay. Um, and they, they need a little extra help before their independence. Um, and, and they're welcome to apply as well um, because the whole goal is to get them you know, on the road to recovery. You work with ladies only, is that correct? correct? Yes. And are they ladies with children and the children are living with them or how does that process work? Um, we, have, we have the ability to have one resident with one child under the age of one year um, okay. for many different reasons. Um, but we do have one, one room that, that can house that situation. We like to establish um, reconnections with family and, and healthy, supportive people in their life. So we like to encourage them to you know, get back connected with their kids if for some reason they've lost connection. Um, the age varies, so it can be anything from, they have to be 18 or older, but you know, it could be teenage to you know, older ages because the end outcome is still the same focus. We want them right. to recover. So how would a person be able to be involved in Grace Haven Ministries as a client? Somebody who is struggling with addiction, uh, they have broken that cycle and they don't want to go back to that life. As right. they say, you've got to change people, places, and things if Absolutely. you're going to be healthy. Yeah. So uh, what would be the process of somebody getting involved as a client at Grace Haven Ministries? Um, we, the programs that we offer in-house, as long as, as women are, can drug test and, and show a clean test, um, regardless of where they're at in their recovery, they can attend our programs. Um, some of them are court um, approved, so if they need an extra class, we welcome them to come. Okay. Um, so that, that can kind of be an outside door, you know, for someone who's mm -hmm. not necessarily living there, they can still come and be a part of, of what we offer. Okay. Um, or they can apply online um, through the website. There's an application that they can download or we can mail them. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we at least have to kind of know a little bit of a background for them to be a part of Grace Haven. Do you go to the jails? Because you mentioned yes. that jail and prison is where some of those are. Yes. So you go there? Yes, we go once a week uh, to the jail. Um, mm -hmm. And that is that is an extension of the ministry. Okay. So, so you're meeting them where they are. Right, absolutely. Uh, find out if they're serious about yeah. taking the next healthy step. Right. And one of those steps that can help in that process is Grace right. Haven Ministries. Yeah. So they fill out an application. My guess is you don't take all comers. They've right. got to meet certain criteria. Right. And when they meet that criteria, then you say, yep, you're uh, able to come. Right. Uh, you have two houses, is that correct? Correct. Uh, Sarah's house? Yes, is Sarah's that the house and uh, then Grace's house. Right. Um, so are they each, side by side? Yeah, they are. They are side by side. Each house can house four women. Very so. good. So up to eight women. I, I know uh, talking with you off the air, there is a concern that you have about separation anxiety that can happen when you have separate houses. Yeah. Um, talk to me about your thoughts about that. Um, you know, it's really, it's an interesting dynamic because a lot of them, they need a family atmosphere and that group setting when they're all together under one roof. Um, it's very important and, and it brings a whole different element to to where they're at and how, how that helps their recovery. Right. Um, and what, what we see is when, when you have to switch houses, you know, maybe one resident has to move to the other house or, you know, if someone leaves to go on to the next step, um, it changes the whole dynamic and it literally you have to start from scratch again where is you know seeing that challenge if they were all under one roof you know in one house um, you wouldn't see that quite so much because relationships are built and established and trust and accountability um, and support people and when that's broken it it brings a different element of brokenness to where they're at and some of its anxiety and sometimes it's just you know, hurt feelings, and we, we don't want that to be part of, of the recovery process if we can help right, it. Right. Um, so it is. That's a very challenging aspect right now. So do you have any ideas as ways you might be able to improve that process? Because the end result is right. you want everybody that comes through Grace Haven yeah. Ministries to be healthy. Right, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure. I'm still mm -hmm. working on that. Sure. One, one house would be ideal. Sure. <laughs> you know, getting to that point, there's a lot of things that, that would be entailed to make that happen and sure. come to fruition. But it, it certainly is um, a goal and it is a focus point moving forward. And it's, it's you know, part of Grace Haven moving forward. How, how can we become a one, one house facility to help women overcome addiction? Yeah, it's so, to enhance their recovery. Absolutely, because a lot of those aspects are key factors in their recovery. 
Very good. If you were talking to a family member of someone who is struggling with addiction, uh, a lady, because you work directly with ladies, what would you say to them to offer them hope or help or wholeness or the potential for healing in their life and in the life of their loved one? That, and, and honestly, I, I had to say it today. Um, so it kind of touches a, a soft spot in my heart. Um, it is going to be tough and it is not going to be easy. And sometimes the easy way out is to use, is, yeah. is to stay in the cycle in that pattern of addiction. And the most challenging and the bravest thing that they can do and the scariest thing that they can do is say, I'm serious about my recovery and I want to make this work because it is challenging on so many aspects every single day to get to that point. Um, and, and accountability is huge. So for family members to just say, you know, this isn't going to be easy. You know, sometimes that tough love is what they need, mm -hmm. um, but they have to be accountable for their actions. And as soon as you see that they're starting to own their decisions and be honest about their decisions, that's when you know they're serious. Um, you can't do it for them. And a lot of times family will come and say, they need help, they need help, but they have to be the ones to come and say, I need help. Yeah. Um, so sometimes that's challenging because every, you know, family members want to fix it. Correct. And it's, it's, it's very challenging on a daily basis, but when you see the women overcoming the fear and making the commitment, that's when you see change. No question. They have to want it. Yeah. And oh, many women do. They're yeah. not always sure how to get there. Absolutely. That's why Grace Haven Ministries yeah. comes along. Because we can meet them right where they're at and right. give them tools within the community, give them tools um, where they're at with us to help them with that process because they, they can't do it by themselves sometimes. They do need help. And just having someone to meet them right where they're at and say, look, it's not going to be easy, but look, we're going to give you the tools that you can utilize right. to, to help your recovery and, and make it a little bit easier than what it is by yourself. Others have overcome, others have been healthy, others have broken the cycle of addiction, and you can do that too. Absolutely. If folks would like to get a hold of Grace Haven Ministries, how do they do that? Um, I would go to our website, which is gracehavenplace.com. Um, our applications, phone number, email, all of that is on there, um, and, and my number's on there as well. So there's different ways that you can contact us. Very good. Shannon Littleton, the executive director of Grace Haven, following in the founder's footsteps. Yes. That's got to be a little bit challenging. It's a little intimidating, yes. <laughs> right. Um, and yet you've risen to the challenge, and you're really here to help women in Lancaster and Fairfield County to health and wholeness and happiness yes. in their life. They want to be happy. They, they just need somebody to come along. You've chosen to be one of those people who will come along. So we congratulate you on Thank taking you. the reins and using your skills and talents and abilities to make a difference in these lives. And uh, we um, encourage you to keep up the great work. Thank you very much. That's Shanna Littleton. She's the executive director of Grace Haven Ministries. You can get more information by going to Grace Haven Place. Dot org to learn more about Grace Haven Ministries. You can contact the Recovery Center. They're waiting and wanting to help. They're at 201 South Columbus Street in Lancaster. Their website is therecoverycenter.com or you can give them a call 740-687-4500. Join us next time as we'll talk to another individual who helps us maneuver down the road to recovery. These waters were woven into the culture of Native American tribes. The descendants of the early Europeans built a business here based on agriculture. And today, this unique destination in the central Ohio countryside comes to life with stories and memories centuries old. The Fairfield County Historical Parks invites you to amazing Rock Mill. Above the falls of the Hocking River Gorge, here together, nature and man 
have created some truly American stories that you'll want to experience with the entire family. Visit us or learn more about Rock Mill and the largest wooden water wheel in the nation at historicalparks.org.